Well, first of all, I think the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel did an excellent job on the series that they did that identified the issues um, that, frankly, were horrific stories about what families um, experienced, and my heart goes out to those individuals. Um, this is a, a huge um, issue, and frankly, when we don't deal with the issue up front, it really costs homeowners a tremendous, taxpayers, a tremendous amount uh, of money on the back end. And what do I mean by that? Um, the preventative services that were mentioned are really the issues that we have to address. When I did the State of the Justice Tour as the Chair of Judiciary and Corrections, I have to say to you that the individuals, after we closed that hospital, the individuals are now going into the correction system. Sometimes because they just needed someone who was monitoring their medication. So part of what I want to say is whether it's Ms. Kathleen, whose son um, was found um, dead in his, in his apartment after four days of her calling because the caseworker had not gone to check on them, whether it's the mismanagement that, is, that has existed there, or frankly, whether it's the lack um, of preventative services or support mechanisms that exist in the community, it's a crucial issue, and the needs of those, those clients have to be the thing that drives our policy, not just the budgetary concepts. We have to be able to figure out creative, innovative ways that we can go, for example, and get Title 19 money and ask for a waiver from the feds and use our relationships that we have across the line to accomplish that task. So that's where intergovernment relationships come in, that's where relationships with your state legislators and your federal delegation all become an important piece in order for us to accomplish this task. Sure. And a lighter side, I begin by telling the public that our health in general is important. As you can tell I have a little bronchitis, so uh, I appreciate that uh, to, today as well as much as anything. And specifically the topic of mental health, you know, that picture is from a hospital that closed about a decade and a half ago. But the problem of dealing with mental illness uh, is just as real today as it has been at any time in the past. Uh, we in this last budget recognize that even though we've had a tight budget, even though uh, we've had to balance other things, we put about $1.7 million more into mental health services in Milwaukee County because we knew just how important the issue was. And to take it a step further, when Meg Kissinger and others from the Journal Sentinel uh, did the series over the past couple of years on housing problems, is I'm very proud of the fact that instead of county pointing a finger at the city who does public housing and the city pointing a finger at the county that does inpatient support for people suffering from mental illness. We set those differences aside and the mayor and I stepped up, put together a team uh, that has aggressively worked over the past year, not just to talk about, but to effectively put in place real housing options with supportive assistance for individuals who suffer from various degrees of mental illness. That's something we take very seriously. That's a commitment we have not just by law, but a an obligation that we have morally uh, to the very people that we represent here in Milwaukee County, and as long as I'm the county executive, we'll continue to do that. Taking a step further in terms of the vision, uh, it's not just enough to put money in it, because we have a mental health complex out on the county grounds that is years past its prime. We have an opportunity, working with the leadership of the county board, to move to the old St. Michael's Hospital site, to take something that would give us three times the amount of acute inpatient care that we would need to be able to address those needs immediately. And it's not just been budgetary issues, it's been a population that has taken off and the severity of the population that has taken off that has been a huge challenge for us. Giving a new state-of-the-art facility that costs the same or less than our current facilities would be a great way of addressing that in the future. And I'm committed to working with the county board to make that possible. I, I just wanted to um, add, add a piece that I think is really important. Um, well, we're going to have a chance oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I I'll wait on that, that too. Um, but uh, the enthusiasm is uh, it should be loaded in the, uh, in the port. Uh, and then you have uh, the ship is out to sea. In the middle, we have our freeway. And then somebody's light rail. Uh, and then in the lower, <laughs> the lower right hand, we have uh, one of our many abandoned railroad rights of way. Um, and so this question is about transportation. In fact, it's the first of two. Um, the next one will be more specifically about the bus. But uh, the question goes like this. As you know, transportation is one of the factors uh, that provides the infrastructure for uh, a vibrant uh, economy. What role will you play as a Milwaukee County Executive to ensure 
seven county southeastern Wisconsin region has a modern and balanced transportation system that positions our region to compete <coughs> economically? And what are you going to do as a leader to bring southeastern Wisconsin to a consensus on this issue? And the leader goes first. Yes. Sorry. Uh, this, again, uh, truly goes to the relationships uh, that one has. As a county executive, I think it's important to not only have um, relationships with the county board, uh, because you cannot be a lone island. You cannot be an ostrich. You cannot stick your head in the sand and um, think that e-commerce doesn't happen or that, you know, frankly, global uh, markets don't happen. And I think it's crucial that we have a county executive that's able to think beyond where we are now, that has the vision for the future in order to connect us so that we can grow. This region cannot grow if we, if we continue to do things how we did 50 years ago. We do need to stabilize, and we'll talk about it in a minute, transit system, but we also need to think innovatively. How are we going to connect? Every employer I talk to talks to me about two things. One, having a workforce that is trained and is able to do the job and knows that coming to work every day is important, but also getting people to work and making sure that we can connect people to the jobs. We need a system that is going to be in place. And what I've already done is supported the KRM in that process, although I do believe that it shouldn't happen without a stabilized funding source for uh, a transit system. But in addition to that, uh, I believe that we need to uh, engage conversation. We cannot just have one view and refuse to look at what is best for this county and developing this county based on our one view. Yeah, a couple of key things for you. One, I, I start out by saying for regional transportation, there's one picture missing, uh, and that's the airport. Uh, one of our greatest regional assets here is General Mitchell International Airport. We just broke the all-time record again with 7.7 .7 million passengers. Uh, it is one of the fastest growing airports in the country, and it's essentially the front door to business travelers in and out of not only Milwaukee County, but out of this region. We have made, in conjunction with the county board, significant investments to make that an even greater regional, not just in southeast Wisconsin, but into northern Illinois, regional for all to this area, and we'll continue to do so. Uh, when it comes to other forms of transportation, in fact, most of those meetings have been held off the airport. They've been held under my leadership of bringing all the major mayors and county executives who have or connected uh, to transit-related uh, systems here in southeast of Wisconsin together repeatedly. It's something where we're trying to forge a strategy that looks on what will regional transportation look like, not just in the next year or two, uh, but for many years to come. We've also put forward a proposal to take the $91.5 million that have been sitting um, around for uh, almost a decade and a half uh, and apply that to a smart system uh, that would be using the technology of bus rapid transit expanding that all throughout Milwaukee County. We've got another phase we're going to be announcing soon that will go into uh, six of the other adjoining counties here in southeastern Wisconsin to take that system that's worked very effectively in 20 different urban markets across this country and uh, apply it in a way that uh, will connect to the major transit systems that we have here to make for a very effective transit system that connects people to jobs and people to where there are job centers in terms of institutions of higher learning that prepare people for jobs. 